Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Prospects After Dark. I am Kyle Reese. I am your host. Uh, it is June 20th. It's 8.30. It's a Wednesday night, and we are doing Prospects After Dark on a weird time and night. Uh, you know, traditionally, I'd like to do Prospects After Dark either Monday or Thursday nights. I feel like we get a pretty good showing those nights, uh, but Wednesday can be kind of weird. Now, we have a lot to talk about. Hello, son. How are you, Graham? It's nice to see you. Not really. Hello. Uh, Victoria Dryden, hello. Uh, welcome to our little shindig. Uh, look, as everyone knows, we've got plenty to talk about. It's kind of been a down couple weeks here for the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, I mean, we can start there. We can start at the minor leagues. The short season clubs have fired up. Uh, there is plenty to talk about. Uh, hello, everyone. Cards, gifts, hello. Mark Hoppel, hello. Uh, you dog lovers. I do love a good dog. Love them dogs. All right, so tonight we're drinking Makers again. It's still affordable, and you can't pass up on Makers. Tell us about Nolan Gorman at bat that weren't home runs. Uh, great question by Graham to start us off, and I mean that in total sincerity, Graham. Uh, yesterday, Nolan Gorman hit his first professional home run. He went one for four in his Johnson City debut, and he hit an opposite field home run. In the other three at-bats, uh, he was somewhat overmatched. He struck out pretty bad against a lefty. By the way, Nolan Gorman is a third baseman slash DH. He's only played DH so far for Johnson City, uh, who the Cardinals drafted with their first pick in the draft. And uh, so anyways, he looked bad against the lefty. He got blown away by the lefty, struggled a little bit in his other two at-bats. Uh, he's struggled tonight a little bit, too. I was listening to that game a little bit before I pumped the music in. And, uh, you know, he is still, there's still work to be done. It'll be fun to see how it all goes along. He's at Johnson City. That's worth getting excited about. And we'll figure things out uh, g going on. So far, the Cardinals draftees haven't done very much in just their like first three games. So uh, let's see what's going on. Oh, hey, Mr. Cower is here. Uh, Jackson Cower, who we were all uh, wondering. who also. Uh, let me take a step back. So Jackson Cower is a pitcher from Florida who it looked like the Cardinals might draft. He ended up being drafted by the Kansas City Royals. And he pitched... One of the best College World Series games uh, you'll see. Six and two-thirds innings, 13 strikeouts. He almost single-handedly willed Florida to a College World Series victory. And, uh, man, his changeup is devastating when it's on. It's been completely on for the last two starts that he's had. Uh, anyways, uh, congratulations to the Cower family on being drafted. Congratulations on the job they did raising Jackson. Uh, uh, an incredible start, an incredible week, and hopefully nothing but great things to come for Jackson. Uh, let's see, Gorman was one for four with three Ks. Yeah, that's kind of what it looked like. You know, he might have only had two Ks now that I think about it. Uh, that game was incredible, Cardinals gift set. I did not get to watch it, uh, but it seems like every single one of these College World Series games has been incredible. Now, we're here to talk about the Cardinals. Uh, we're here to talk about the minor league system. We're here to talk about some nice young players like Jackson Cower, uh, the, the, the tremendous right-hander. Um, but if you get some time, you should definitely tune in for... Uh, prospects after dark, but you're here. You should definitely tune into the College World Series because it's been incredible. Even right now, the Oregon State UNC game, uh, it seems like it's been pretty damn good. Uh, why did the Cardinals troll Ponce de Leon? Graham, bring in the heat. I like it. Uh, hey, Kyle, uh, waiting for the first cheers. I need another drink. All right, so how about this? Uh, we know we have one of the members of the Jackson Cower family in here. Normally, we go straight to the Hicks family. Uh, we love the Hicks. They're going to take just the small, the smallest of back seats this time. They'll get cheers number two. And uh, anyways, to Mr. Jackson Cower uh, for the tremendous performance in the College World Series and to the Cower family for uh, the draft and all the amazing job they've done rearing young Jackson. Tremendous stuff. Uh, Troy Poole asks, hey, Kyle, if you have time tonight, I'd be interested to have your thoughts on Ortega and Montero. I'll watch and listen later. I'm at Zach's ball game. First off, good luck to Zach at his ball game. For those of you who don't know, Troy Poole is an awesome guy. You should follow him on Twitter. He's just a really solid family man, as I've said a bunch of times. Uh, uh, Mark Hoppel says, is Dakota, Hud Hust is Dakota Hudson starting on Monday? I don't know yet. You know, smart money is on John Gant. I'm pulling for Daniel Ponce de Leon. Uh, getting, are, the, are the Cardinals going to sign Gingery or Gingery or whatever the hell his name is? Uh, the fourth round draft pick out of Texas Tech who had Tommy John surgery. I would think yes. Uh, our boy Wes Wells brought up a good point that there's a chance that they're waiting. Wes Wells, or that uh, uh, Gendry is waiting until after Texas Tech runs their course in the College World Series, even though he isn't eligible to play. Uh, I think that's a good chance, and, and we'll see what happens. 
To Troy's Pools question about Ortega and Montero, it's just as simple, Troy, you know this. Uh, Dennis Ortega is a tremendous catching prospect. Uh, defensively, he's ahead of where a 20-year-old should be. He has a strong arm. He leads the Midwest League with nine caught stealings. Uh, he did it in the All-Star game yesterday. It was beautiful. It was strong. Uh, Dennis Ortega is a name to keep an eye on. His bat is starting to catch up to his defense a little bit, at least early on in the season. Uh, Alaris Montero is the third base prospect who will probably end up playing first base in the long run, but it seems like he's cleaning up third base a little bit. He's worn out a little bit, worn down rather, as the season's gone on a little bit. Uh, but we still love him. We still think he's fantastic, and I could definitely see. Anyways, he he has the potential to be a power bat. He has the potential to be uh, an average bat. He's really interesting. Who is the best all around hitter in the system? You know, if we're not talking about any of the players that have been drafted, you know, if you're talking about from like an approach, like complete. Hitter, probably Oscar Mercado right now just because he's closer. You know, I like Mercado better than I like Max Schrock. I think Max Schrock is still too aggressive. Mercado has done a tremendous de job of developing his entire approach. Uh, I'm, I'm going to omit all the players from the draft in this discussion because they're just too much. I think Alaris Montero has done a lot to raise his stock to potentially be that. Um, there are a lot of guys who don't separate themselves. And this is kind of one of the soapboxes I've been on lately whenever I get a chance to talk about the Cardinals in the system. I just don't think that right now the Cardinals have any type of high-end talent between Springfield and, you know, below Springfield and at State College. Like, there's some guys that are interesting that might be able to make a um, an impact, but but we'll see. Somebody asked, uh, Iowa Neck says, does Chenea have a future as at catcher Chris Chenea? Chris Chenea, uh, first off, I, there are two guys in the Cardinal system that I love that are probably nothing more than minor league depth guys. One is Ryan McCarville. The other one is Chris Chenea. Uh, they both have an unusual, unique power set. Uh, they both play catcher in first base. Chenea is a better catcher. Um, I would think... Now, this is where Chenea gets difficult. Is He's in a system where he's probably better suited to play first base. Um, he's a solid catcher. Like For a minor league double-A catcher, he's right on par with what you would see in the minor leagues at that level. Now, he doesn't do anything that would stand out, and there isn't, like, compared to the defense of Dennis Ortega or Carson Kelly or Andrew Kisner, like, he's, he's probably a kick below Kisner, but he's not really on par with anyone else. Uh, he's a really, really great minor league utility man, and you never know. In one of the uh, roundups that I did last year, I mentioned with McCarville and Shania, they both have the potential power-wise to maybe make a major league debut and that's a huge step and something like that could happen but it's still pretty rare uh when will spike o'neill get back to the majors uh ryan ali says uh you know right now it, it's not looking promising i would think that you know how about this by the all-star game he'll be back up something will happen he'll be back up he probably won't play very much give me your top five pitching prospects right now uh, i like that alec hansen uh, i like that forrest whitley in the cardinal system uh ryan helsley's hurt so i don't really know how to how to handle that uh, I'm going Helsley first if he's not hurt, and then Hudson, and then you probably I'm not going to include Gomber, um, Ponce de Leon. I'd have to throw in there. Connor Green from a bullpen standpoint, I think I would I would throw in there. There isn't a whole lot going on at Springfield. I like Evan Kuczynski, who's at Palm Beach. Um, you know, right again, right now the the organization's top heavy, and there really isn't a whole lot to like. Backfill that. I, I think there's an argument that can be made that Forrest Ro or uh, uh, Griffin Roberts from Wake Forest. See, I, I'm still doing it. Uh, that Griffin Roberts might be that player, but let's let him get some time in the organization and see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. Is Dylan Carlson still holding his own? Now I meant to look to see how he's been doing over the last couple of weeks, C70, uh, and I haven't had a chance to like catch up. Uh, but last I checked, he was hitting. He was doing that 233, 333 thing, and. Uh, you know, not a whole lot of power or extra bases, but yes, holding his own at a level he's way too young for. Uh, Figuera had three errors last night playing third. That's a great observation, Iowa Neck. Um, I like Edwin Figuera. He is an amazing, sh a very, very good minor league shortstop. I think that's where he should play. And I actually think he's a better player than some of the shortstop options at Peoria right now. He held his own at Peoria. I think that's where he should be. Uh, I like the fact that he's in State College learning third base, becoming a third baseman. But he's not, he doesn't profile offensively for third base. He's got to stay at short. But the Cardinals have a weird logjam of similar type players at the shortstop level. Ameldo Diaz. Uh, they're there. It makes it tough. Uh, would you trade Yachty for Trout? I would trade Yachty for, Yachty for Trout. No one else would, but I would. Uh, is Rosarena as fast as Mags? Uh, no, he's he's not as like... How do I put it? I think they're equally as fast in the outfield. They have equal fast closing speed. But if you're asking me who's going to get from home 
to home quicker. I'm going to go Magnura Sierra every time. I think Randy probably has quicker, like, first to third speed, but I would take Mags on the home to first run. Uh, friggin' Cards. Oh, hey, friggin' Cards is in here. Oh, I love that friggin' Cards. We haven't seen or heard from him in a while. I hope everything's going way. I hope everything is going well for you, friggin' Cards. We love you, buddy. Uh, let's see. Somebody asks... Uh, are are you feeling Kisner more than Kelly? Uh, I haven't touched either of them intimately yet, uh, but I will be in Memphis this weekend, and maybe Kisner will find his way down there, and we can no. Uh, I look. Everyone knows that I'm a big Andrew Kisner fan. I've 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 been on the Kisner bandwagon for a long time now, even before like since he was drafted almost. I've always felt strongly about Andrew Kisner. Uh, it's funny right now because Kisner's starting to make adjustments defensively. Uh, just as every catcher in the minor league does. And he's doing well, but you're seeing his power evaporate at the plate. He's still holding his own at Springfield. Uh, but it seems like he hasn't hit a home run in, in like two months or something like that. He needs, again, th these aren't areas of concern. These are just observations. I'm not worried about Andrew Kisner. The power will come. It'll come with average. It'll come with low strikeouts, and it'll come with walks. Uh, it'll come with solid defense. It's just right now it's not all right there. And it, it'll come around. Now, Carson Kelly, since being sent down to Memphis, is back to being Carson Kelly. Like, Carson Kelly, the prospect. Uh, take that for whatever it is. Uh, just know, also, when evaluating catchers, always, it takes catchers longer to develop. Uh, it always takes them longer to develop. You can look at Kurt Suzuki. You can look at Austin Hedges. You can look at Mike Zunino. Uh, pretty much everyone but Yachty. It takes a little longer for them to develop. So, I, I'm feeling strongly about both of them still. I'm not ready to hammer the casket door shut. On, uh, on Carson Kelly just yet. Uh, ooh, uh, let's see. Uh, has Patrick Wisdom plateaued in Memphis? So that's a really good question. Go eat at Pearl's Oyster House in Memphis. Pearl's Oyster. You know what? I meant to do that the last time uh, when I was in Memphis. Pearl's Oyster. Um, and I didn't get a chance to. Has Patrick Wisdom plateaued in Memphis? Very solid question. What I'll tell you is that when you're an advanced age, when you're, <coughs> pardon me, when you're 26 in the minor league level and you're repeating a level for the third time, you've plateaued. Like, he's doing great right now. Hold on, I gotta get a drink. Hey, to the Hicks family. Sorry about that. You've plateaued, yeah. It, it's hard to plateau when you've done the level three times and when you're old as compared to the other prospects at the level. It's not like plateaued with him. What he's done is he's he's maximized AAA. He can't do anything more at AAA. Uh, it's not going to get any better. It's probably not. It, it'll probably only get worse. Uh, and now it's just a matter of if the Cardinals can find an opportunity for him. Uh, the 40-man roster works against him. The way that the roster is constructed works against him. Although, with Jose Martinez getting hurt, and granted he stayed in the game, uh, but if you saw a DL stint and it ended up being something serious with the shoulder... Anything could happen at that point. And I, I'll say it a hundred times. I personally root for Patrick Wisdom. I hope he gets an opportunity. Um, it just would be a hard thing for him. And yeah, he's probably plateaued. Uh, does he have any trade value? Again, because the thing about Patrick Wisdom, that's tough. And, you know, teams will send their scouts and they'll see him and they'll make that decision. But you can't go on stats because he's been at the level for so long. He's played a really good third base and a really good first base. Uh, I would think a team might take a chance on him if they have a 40-man roster spot. But remember with Patrick Wisdom, every team had a chance to, to pick him up almost for free other than some chump change in the grand scheme of things, and they all passed this winter. I think that that's more an indication of what the market looks like for Patrick Wisdom than anything. And that's not to bag on Patrick Wisdom. I love him. Uh, Patrick B says, hey, Kyle. Hello, Patrick B. Cole Hamels from Munoz and a lower-level prospect, Holy Shield says. I would think it would take more than that. Uh, I know Cole Hamels has an extremely high FIP, uh, but I still think it would take more than just Gyro Munoz and something else. Uh, what prospect would other teams be interested in at the deadline? Well, you look at any of the prospects at the top level, you know, any of the outfield prospects. Now, uh, I've been critical of Jose Adoliz Garcia of JAG, um, but the last I checked, in the last two weeks or so, he's starting to turn his season around. I would think JAG has, has value. Carson Kelly, Max Schrock, Gyro Munoz, uh, all of the outfielders in the mix. Oscar Mercado has done a tremendous job to bolster his stock. Uh, ooh, uh, Scott, and on cue, Scott D. Walker asked, why has Adolis Garcia struck, uh, struggled so much? Is it bad luck? It was not bad luck. What I will tell you, and I haven't got to watch many Memphis games in like the last 
two weeks. I've only been able to watch the stat line. And what I've uh, what I noticed when he was struggling is that he was swinging at everything, any type of breaking pitch he was hacking at. A lot of times inside, a lot of times outside. Uh, he was just hacking, and it was getting him in trouble again. What you find with a lot of Cuban-born players is that they have an overly aggressive approach at the plate. Uh, Jag did a tremendous job of changing that last year. It's just, it kind of compromised his power. And I feel like he came into this season wanting to hammer the baseball, especially after the spring training he had. And it really compromised his approach. And now we're starting to see him back off of that a little bit. And he's starting to find success. Uh, what prospect hall could Mart bring? Lots of AL contenders need an improvement. Look, I, I would think Matt Carpenter, especially with the way he's playing right now, would, would get quite a haul. Uh, you know, you're probably talking about one high-level prospect and two mid-level prospects, maybe two high-level prospects. Um, but the Cardinals aren't going to trademark. Not when they're winning, not when they have a plus 500 record. So just put that out of your head for now. Uh, put it out of your head for now. The only way they're going to trade anyone is if they're six games out of the wild card. And at that point... You're talking probably past the deadline, uh, especially Matt Carpenter, especially Matt Carpenter on a team-friendly deal. Did you watch Holland Any and his rehab appearances? Uh, that's from Kiefer Dean Roach. Can you answer the Ponce de Leon troll question? I missed it. Uh, what will the cards do with Fowler if he never starts hitting? I would imagine you just sit on the bench. Hey, Shelton Mysterio, what's up? Uh, sorry, I, I know we have questions. I missed the Ponce de Leon tre uh, troll question. Uh, isn't the next Brett Wallace, is he... Uh, I don't know what that is. Does Connor Green look better out of the pen? Not really. Honestly, not really. I haven't seen him much out of the pen. I know he's still struggling with his command. Uh, let's see. Haven't heard much about Griffin Roberts, Baker, Gill since they signed. Heard much from... Uh, somebody says, bring back pool holes. Uh, haven't heard much from Tyler Mustache. So, Mateo Gill uh, has played two games in the GCL, and he's got a couple of hits. Seems to be handling his own. I think he played third in the first game. I don't know what he did tonight. Uh, I don't believe that uh, Luke and Baker has played yet. And again, as we talked last week with uh, Griffin Roberts, the Cardinals have a way of bringing their drafted pitchers on very, very slowly after they've reached a lot of innings. That's what they're going to do with Griffin Roberts. Why did the Cardinals troll Ponce de Leon? I answered, oh, I, I didn't, Graham, I'm sorry. Why did they troll him? They did the same thing with Gomber before they sent him down. Uh, my answer to your question is very blunt because the manager does a poor job of managing his bullpen and doesn't use all his assets available to him in a proper manner. Uh, but hopefully we end up getting to see Ponce de Leon in the very near future. Uh, any update on signing Hill? Hey, Jay David Reed, how are you, buddy? Um, no update. And a matter of fact, the fact that I haven't heard anything is probably a bad sign. Uh, they signed one of the two uh, players uh, that they drafted uh, from foreign leagues. The, the kid from the... Uh, uh, oh, my God, I'm such an asshole. Uh, Rivera from the Dominican League. Uh, Dominican Academy, they signed him, and they've had trouble signing Calleo, uh who's a Puerto Rican kid. They, they haven't been able to sign him yet. Uh, and it seems like he and Jaden Hill, it's going to be one or the other and more than likely, uh, because Jaden Hill is asking, from what I understand, for a sub, like around a mil, and I don't think the Cardinals are going to go that direction. We'll see how it all pans out. Uh, thank you for Sorry about that, Graham. My bad. Kyle, will the Cardinals ever not suck? It's bad right now, Moves, isn't it? Uh, hello, Moves. It's nice to see you, bub. Um, yeah, it's bad. And, you know... It sucks because you have games like Tuesday night where, sure, the bullpen kind of blows it and you get excited, but the game's kind of good, you know? And then you get a cool moment with Greg Holland. You saw another good performance out of Greg Holland today. You know, I, it's never not going to be frustrating. It, the team sucks right now, but I can't imagine it not being frustrated this year. And you know, Moe's, what's crazy is, think back to the preseason when, you know, you thought and you almost had me sway that they might win 94 games. And... There's reason to think that they can reclaim that 90-win area. But it's going to take a lot of turning around. It's going to take pitchers going deeper into games. Uh, it's going to take Greg Holland being what we've seen out of Greg Holland in the last two days. Mm. You know, everything's going to need to click. What I like right now is, and granted, they're in a hitter-friendly park in Philadelphia. But I feel like, and we'll see what happens with Jose Martinez's arm and shoulder. But I feel like... Uh, uh, with the front, the top four of that lineup, Carp, Fam, Martinez, and uh, uh, Ozuna all hitting right now, I feel like that's a step in the right direction. It's just now it's the pitching needs to get on the same page, where it, it, the pitching needs to get on the same page. 
Uh, four first place teams coming up. I say three wins max. Cody Pointer, you might be right. Uh, but maybe maybe they get it together. I, I don't know. I don't feel like I have a strong enough feeling for this team to say one way or the other. I think if you're hedging your bets, yeah, the smart thing is absolutely to say they they might win one game out of the ne- each in the next three series on average. Uh, that's where the smart money is. I'm just not sure. Need the Rangers talent for 94 wins. Graham loves the Rangers. Uh, the Texas Grams. How come everyone hates McCarver? Oh, hey, what's going on, brother? Uh, how come everyone hates McCarver? You know, at first, I think they hated him because he was critical of the team, and they were used to getting a lot of, like, puff and nonsense from Roboski and Horton half the time. Uh, um, and I think now they hate him because he's starting to, like, he's starting to say stupid things. Like, I hate to be blunt about it. I like McCarver. I liked him a lot more last year before this year. You know, he was talking some nonsense about Jordan Hicks's slider being pedestrian. He's just a little off right now, you know? And then he started talking about, like, he's just, he's not the same McCarver. I, I used to really like McCarver, and I feel like he's fallen off. It, you know, I can't tell you why other people don't like him, but what I can or what I can tell you is I've become a little less of a fan, even though I still respect him, uh, just because I don't feel like his he has a grasp of baseball anymore. And that could all, that's probably just because he's not around it like he used to be. You know, he, he's, he doesn't call very many games anymore. So I just think he's just not as connected as he used to be. Uh, somebody said McCarver is bad. Home runs help you win games. Yeah, from Isaac Hopper. Yeah, you know, he says bad stuff sometimes. Uh, what do you think about Kenny Vargas? I, uh, I like Kenny Vargas a lot. I haven't watched enough of him to have, like, a scouting report on him. Uh, I like where they signed him. I like where they drafted him. I like what they got him for. Uh, we'll see how it all goes. What's your 2019-2020 rotation look like? How about we focus on the current rotation uh, and not focus on 2019 and 2020? It's a great question. It's a question meant for an article and a prospect Macarena Q&A. Uh, but there's too many questions streaming and then to go over one by one. What I will say is, as I tweeted out yesterday, I think Luke Weaver needs a break. The Michael Walker injury happened at the wrong time for that. Uh, but I personally like the idea of calling up Ponce de Leon and Gant, sending Weaver down, dealing Waka, and just letting it play out for a little bit. Uh, will someone pluck clap from the cards before Matheny gets the axe? That's a good question, uh, Alex. Alex French, right? I think your name's Alex. Um, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, let's not get too worried about someone plucking clap away. Remember, minor league, minor league managers have a tendency to have a following by their parent club. Uh, that may or may not always be warranted. Stubby Klopp will probably get a chance to be a manager in in the long run, but he's not knocking on anyone's door other than Cardinals fans' doors. Did Weaver ever have the walk issue while you covered him in the minors? No. No, one thing Luke Weaver didn't... Look, what's getting lost in Luke Weaver's struggle is that he's lost control of his fastball. And because he's lost control of his fastball, command of his fastball, he's lost control of his his curve, or, well, his changeup first and then his curve. I cannot tell you, like, the reason I was so bullish on Luke Weaver is he painted the corners beautifully in the minors. He would freeze hitters with a fastball changeup, fastball changeup, inside, outside, up, down. He he did, like, and there was no walks. There were no hit-by-pitches. There were double plays when runners were on. There were strikeouts. It was all there, and we saw that click last year when he got called up. It's just, it hasn't manifested recently. He needs to rediscover whatever it is uh, that has cost him the command of his fastball. Who's the person standing behind you? Uh, that's Jesus. We're always together. No, it's uh, it's your mom, bro. Oh, hello from Switzerland. Hey, we love the Swiss. I like cheese and chocolate. Uh, that sounds beautiful, not insane. Do you think the reason Hudson isn't hyped that much is because he was labeled a BP guy on draft day? Mm. Look, I think, look, Hudson and Helsley, neither of those guys got the publicity that Alex Reyes, Luke Weaver... And, uh, you know, Michael Waka, the Jack Flaherty guy. And the reason is because there are holes in his game. Like, not huge holes in his game, but remember, he struggled against lefties. He didn't strike a lot of guys out until recently. Um, so he's still learning on the fly. That's the difference. Like, you know, when Jack Flaherty came up, he was a pretty complete prospect. Striking out lefties, striking out righties, getting ground balls. Uh, same thing with Alex Reyes. Like, Alex Reyes had a control issue. Uh, Luke Weaver, too. Same thing. And that's not the case with Hudson. Hudson had somewhat of a high walk rate. He had somewhat of a high contact rate. He struggled against lefties. Uh, I think that's the difference. And the other thing with Hudson and both Hudson and Helsley is that entering the year when the hype train is rolling harder than it is at any time, 
Um, there were a lot of guys ahead of him. How is Kramer Robertson coming along? The LSU guy, the shortstop. Uh, so it's been bad at Kramer for at Palm Beach. I like Kramer Robertson a lot. They say he does a good job as a leader down there, but he just has really struggled at the plate. Uh, he's a little over aggressive. It doesn't seem like that's changing. Uh, not a whole lot of hits. Not a whole lot of anything that resembles any kind of power. It's uh, it hasn't been promising. And again, he's been okay at short. Uh, but the limited arm strength is going to force him to second eventually. Odds Gorman makes Peoria next year from Seagrace underscore 10. Uh, the odds of that, I would say right now, are 50-50. It all depends on how he does this year, how he trains in the offseason. What I will say is that him and Johnson City is a good indication that the plan is, and I said good indication, I want you guys to understand that there is um, subtext to that. Uh, that I'm not going to get into detail, but there's good reason to believe that the plan is to start him at Peoria next year if it all goes well this year. Uh, did you think we'd miss DeYoung that much? I did. I didn't think we'd miss Yachty as much as we would miss DeYoung. I, look, you guys have to understand, since the draft, I have been a big Paul DeYoung guy. I was tweeting at Jim Callis about Paul DeYoung after the draft. I, they, they did, he wrote an article about sleepers, and I said, you miss Paul DeYoung, you're going to regret that. Uh, which, by the way, I regret regret tweeting at Jim Callis. That's a total dick move and s classless. I'm kind of a piece of shit like that sometimes. Uh, I apologize to him right now. Um, but he is an important cog. And when he took to shortstop as, took as, he, as quick as he took to shortstop, that proved to me that he's more athletic and intelligent than I was initially giving him credit for. And uh, it shows. So, yes, I did expect them to miss too young this much. Uh, you still the only one who reported Helsley's fatigue? Uh, I can't comment on that, Graham. Who truly has a better chance to be Yachty's replacement, Kisner or Kelly? Honestly, neither. Yachty, Yachty or Molina still has two more years left on his contract after this year. That doesn't line up on a timeline with either of them. I still think that there's a better chance that... Uh, uh, oh, somebody, C70 says, great Father's Day post. Thank you very much. I still think there's a better chance that Ivan Herrera, who's playing at Johnson City right now and is hitting... Or Dennis Ortega ends up being like the actual replacement for Yachty. Uh, if I had to choose one or the other, I'll say Kisner. Uh, but I, we'll see how it all plays out. Again, we're not talking about an immediate timeline. We're talking about a timeline two years in the making. Again, I understand wanting to ask that question. Uh, I think Kisner could handle it. I think Kelly could handle it. Uh, Cloud Kareem says Julio Rodriguez, who is effectively Dennis Ortega's backup in Peoria. Julio has a great contact tool, and he's an okay catcher for the level. Uh, somebody said they want to give Holland credit. Let's give Holland credit. Who gets majority of starts at second base when DeYoung comes back? Again, a completely fluid situation, but you have to be encouraged uh, you have to be encouraged by what you saw out of Colton Wong these last couple games, right? Um, one step at a time. We'll see how it all plays out. Again, I'm more concerned about the Jose Martinez injury than I think a lot of people are. I see that kind of collision, and I immediately think of Scott Rowland. Uh, his reaction makes me think of Scott Rowland, although he's naturally a dramatic guy, and I don't mean that in like a negative way. I just He's like excited and exuberant, and sometimes uh, the reaction is based on the exuberance and not on actual feel. Uh, I want to see how it is, but... You know, if there's one thing that Alex Reyes in that situation has taught us, when you think you have a surplus, the situation sorts itself out. My guess is, and all Colton Wong needs to keep doing is keep doing what he did in Philadelphia, and we're all good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, rolling out. But, you know, and that's just like whenever I see any type of collision at high speed, I immediately think of that. Alvaro Sejas, uh, signing class. Yes, yeah. Can Stevie Wonder see? Ooh, that's a great question. Yeah. So I believe Stevie Wonder can see. You know, that guy keeps... He's at the point now where he's old enough that he doesn't care that everyone knows he can see. He still keeps the glasses on and pretends to be blind. Uh, but he's always talking about, like, seeing people. Like, oh, it's nice to see you. Come over and we'll watch something. Now, he might just be fucking with people. And if he's messing with people, then that's the greatest, like, the greatest thing ever. That's the guy has got the best personality on earth. Uh, but... I don't think he is. I remember when Pools broke his wrist like that and came back in like 15 games. Yeah, I remember that. I remember when Yachty broke his testicle and came back like two weeks later. I remember when Yachty uh, took a foul ball or took a uh, got hit by a pitch. I remember when he jammed his thumb. Like, they're battlers. They're gamers, man. Uh, let's see. I'd 100% sell, John Greco says. Yeah, acting on emotion, I would too. But if you have an organization, that organization is above 500 and you have a lot of injured players and built-in excuses, 
and you want to handle responsibly and you want to keep your job, uh, you wouldn't. Again, I think sometimes we get lost in baseball as fans. Uh, we lose empathy for what's going on in the front office and we forget that the organization is really just a fancy way of saying company. I try to incorporate the word company when I talk about baseball more and more now. And I think you guys should too because it is a business. It is a company. And you have to look at front office decisions from a business standpoint. Uh, name a prettier prospect than Flaherty. I'll tell you what. Look, this is going to get weird. I think that Andrew Kisner is a handsome devil. Uh, you know, if you're willing to cross lines, that jag is built like a... I mean, you know what I mean. Uh, I think the calls to sell and tear it down are out of touch. Uh, better off than most still. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Keep in mind that the Cardinals are still within uh, a shooting match. They're they're within a shot of the wild card, rather. Pardon me. Uh, and there's still so many teams that have sold that they're going to have to beat on and have a chance to beat up on. And it's not as far off as you think. I guess I got to go look at Kisner. Yeah, yeah, Kiefer Dean Rich. Go look at Kisner. Uh, he's dating a Miami Dolphins cheerleader, so you figure it out. I uh, love that Jack Flaherty, though. Yeah, he's a, he's a handsome devil, that Jack Flaherty. Uh, we could be the Royals, so yeah. Yeah, and you know what the Royals did last year is they added instead of subtracting last year. And I think that there's a lesson to be learned there. And I'm not saying it's what I would or wouldn't do uh, to, you know, to hold on and buy. Uh, but I just don't think the Cardinals will. If trade deadline was a week away, what would we do? Oh, they would, they'd buy. They, well, let me rephrase that. They would either stand pat or buy. If we learned one thing from last year, it's they're either going to stand pat or buy. Uh, does a double-A player or an NFL cheerleader make more money? Oh, my God. It's a cheerleader. It is 100% a cheerleader. Here's something that people don't realize is players at double-A, like at double-A, I'm assuming that Andrew Kisner makes $1,800 a month. Think about that. Anyone who has a mortgage or a car payment, think about what that means. They get a meal when they're at home. They get like a $12 allowance on the road or something crazy like that. Uh... It is the least glamorous life in the world. My guess is the Miami Dolphins cheerleader. Uh, buy is such a relative term. Uh, cheerleaders barely get paid minimum wage, though. So do yeah, well. If cheerleaders barely get paid minimum wage, and minor league players don't get paid a minimum wage, then it's a cheerleader easy. Uh, what did you think of the Kelvin Herrera deal? Uh, I'm glad the Cardinals didn't make it because they would have had to give up more. I would have liked to have had Kelvin Herrera, uh, but I. For three months of a player, it just seems like a lot. Uh, good evening, Kyle. Sorry I missed. I didn't know who it was, but hello there. Kyle, do that tongue thing you did last week. You, look, I'm not your little play thing, okay? I don't do tricks on command. Uh, cards try to throw money this year in free agency. I think they will. Uh, somebody says take Chris Archer. I'd love to know what kind of package it's going to get to, to acquire Chris Archer. You know, thinking about what... Uh, the Nationals had to give up to get Kelvin Herrera. It makes you see like just how much you could fetch on the at the deadline for a relief pitcher, more or less someone like Chris Archer. Uh, Jose Arena is hurt. It's probably time for Sandy Alcantara. I hope so. We'll see. The the Marlins have been terrible with Alcantara. He should have been in the rotation for a long time. Uh, somebody says Kyle, grow that hair back. I can't. You know, I've worn hats for so many years, and I, I had my head cooked by the sun that it doesn't grow here, and it grows thin right here, so no more hair. Uh, there's not a there's not a one movie, uh, there's not a one move fix. Probably not. Uh, hello, hello, sex bot. It's nice to see you. A uh, rumor is Moneyball era is about to end in Oakland. I'm gonna miss those subpar Oakland teams. Yeah, it's nice to have like one team that does well every six years, and that's bad every other year. Another s disturbing night with Kyle. Yeah, hello, Eller Market. Uh, thank you for creating the what I'm gonna call the Prospects After Dark drink, which is just a bunch of like prescription medications and booze. Uh, would you root for the LA Rams or Cubs? If I had to choose, I'd root for the Cubs. Uh, the follow deleting Twitter is the reason free agents... Yeah, I don't know about that. I Look, I think that the uh, free agents not coming to St. Louis thing is a little overblown. I think it's a fun narrative that you can write about uh, and you can get miscellaneous and anonymous people to talk about. Uh, but I, it just doesn't carry much clout to me. And again, you know, Hayward was a different situation. But David Price was ready to sign here. It was just a money issue. Dexter Fowler, they had to go over to get him here. Uh, but Mike Lee came here, had to give him a little extra money. I, I just think it's a little overblown. 
Uh, a ball players make two hundred per month, and only for six months. What a crime! A ball players do not make two hundred or two thousand dollars a month. That is absolutely false. I know that for a fact. They make closer to fourteen hundred dollars a month. Uh, just remember, Hayward had to delete his Twitter in Chicago. That's right. Uh, hey, do we know when Ryan Sheriff is coming back? Uh, probably a year from now. He had Tommy John surgery. I'm going to Memphis Friday. Going to catch the game that night. Where should I go for dinner? Hey, I'll be in Memphis on Saturday and Sunday. Hit me up. Uh, I'm on Michael Givens trade train. I love that. Kyle Reese, I love your... I love you mimic. Cool. Hey, look, you know what? I've got a sex bot coming after me. That's a step in the right direction in my life. Uh, free agents aren't coming to STL because Matheny is a bad coach. That's a rumor. It has not been substantiated. I think there's reason to believe it. But again, it's rumor. Let's not treat it as factual. Um, money talks. I'm not saying it's a widespread issue. Money still talks. I'm saying. I get you. I get you. Uh, uh, do you have notes? You list off facts like crazy. Uh, it's definitely the beard. Uh, so we're talking about my beard. You know, I don't get to do this a lot. But I'm going to take a drink to my beard, which is beard-like. Uh, Delvin and the squad update. So, man, I've gone out of my way every morning to wake up and watch Delvin Perez at bats at State College. Hey, Forever Cards, what's up? Um, do you think Mike Shannon should retire? No. I, it, Mike Shannon's terrible if you're trying to listen to the game, but if you're trying to just enjoy the game, he's fun. Uh, somebody said Delvin not playing today. Delvin did not play today. So Delvin Perez is playing for State College, and I've been anxious to watch. I'll tell you what. he, His arm has saved him from committing two errors. He bobbled two balls that I've seen hit to him, and his arm looks as strong as I've ever seen it. That's a check mark in the right direction. His stance is still funky. He's stepping out way too wide when he swings, and that's taking away any chance for him to drive the baseball. But he's finding holes right now when he does make contact. I wouldn't say I've been unimpressed by Delvin. I wouldn't say that I've been impressed by Delvin. What I will say is everything seems to be good with Delvin right now, and that's what's getting excited. May, uh, man, you look like a metal singer. I look like a jackass. I look like an avocado that got peeled open, and then when someone found out it was brown and not ripe, they tried to like fold it back together and then staple it, and then take the staples out and hope that it had been sewn shut properly. Uh, how high is his ceiling? I didn't. I didn't see it. Uh, yeah, I'm a rock and roller. Are you talking about Delvin or the MLB team? I was talking about Delvin Perez, but you make a good point. Should MLB eliminate the shift? I don't have any feelings about the shift at all. Uh, you know, I I kind of like it. The thing is, MLB, and I do agree with a lot of old school baseball people who say this. MLB doesn't need to eliminate the shift. Hitters need to eliminate the shift. That's the only way it's going to change, you know, become complete hitters, push the ball to the left side if you're a left-handed hitter, and force MLB teams to adjust to the shift. Uh, I personally, right now, it's not something I would do. K's are up, home runs are up. It's been trending that way since the beginning of time, and just let it play out. Juan Soto is the best outfielder on the Nats. Don't at me. I love that Juan Soto. Uh, how high is Sejas' ceiling? Uh, you know, his ceiling's high. Yeah. Think You know, this isn't a fair comparison, but think of it as something similar to Luke Weaver. Uh, again, he, think of it as something similar to Luke Weaver. Like, that's his ceiling. Uh, Helsley Hicks Fernandez raised in the back of the 2019 pen. It could happen, but remember, Fernandez is working his way back. Uh, by 2019, I imagine Jordan Hicks will have pitched 715 innings over 3,000 appearances. Uh, and Helsley's hurt right now, so let's see what happens. Do you prefer Bader or Merc Mercado long term? I prefer Mercado. I think Harrison Bader is a fantastic fourth outfielder. I think ultimately that's what Oscar Mercado will be. Uh, I just think right now Harrison Bader has tremendous trade value because of the defensive metrics. And I feel like now would be the time to maximize his potential for trade. Best prospect in the farm system no one is talking about. The easy answer that I go to is Alaris Montero. Uh, I think Yariel Gonzalez has an incredible hit tool. He's a first baseman at Peoria. Um, doesn't have the power to stay at first. Uh, you know, Andy Young at Palm Beach is still getting screwed over. He should be at Springfield. Uh, people still talk about Lane Thomas. I'm, I never really jumped on the Lane train, Lane Tom the Lane train, as it were. Uh, Tommy Edmond. Actually, you know what? Graham says Tommy Edmond. That's a great answer. Not just for not Barilli. Uh, Tommy Edmond is. So let me tell you about Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond was aggressively promoted to Springfield last year, and it showed in his stats. And this year, he struggled a little bit at the get-go, but he's hitting for average over his last 20 games. 
And Mundo Sosa is getting all the headlines uh, because he's hitting for a little bit more power than Edmund did. But Edmund's hitting, he's hitting at the top of the lineup. He's taking walks. He's hitting for average. He's stealing bases effectively without being thrown out. Uh, I would like to change my answer. I will say it's Tommy Edmund. I love that Tommy Edmund. Uh, my boy Colin Gardner over at the Redbird Daily loves Tommy Edmund, and it's for good reason. Uh, oh, so oh, Alex Carr says going to watch the Andre the Giant documentary with my wife. So signing out, you rule. Thank you, Alex. Uh, you're already signed out. Uh, what is my ceiling with you? Uh, we could definitely go steady. Is mi I miss John Jay? Yeah, I said it. Sacrifice the noodle arm for the 300 batting average. Again, I don't care about batting average. I just love John Jay. So I, I understand what you're saying. Where were your thoughts on Piscotti when he was with? Okay, so uh, uh, Edmund is leading the Cardinals minors in stolen bases. I believe. I believe you're right. Uh, Andy Young walking more, striking out less, hitting for more power, three for three. Exactly. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, and this is where it gets fun with Andy Young, uh, ask me the question about Piscotti again. Where it gets fun with Andy Young, he's doing all three of those things, but he's also doing it at a level that he should be doing it at. He should have been in Springfield. He should have started the year in Springfield. We should be talking about his results at Springfield. Right now, his stats are skewed at Palm Beach because he's better than that level. Just like Stefan Trosclair, he should be at Springfield and he's wasting away at Palm Beach. Uh, Naparelli says Tommy Edmund the GOAT. Uh, was Carpenter a highly touted prospect? Carpenter was not a highly touted prospect, but he was a minor league organizational player of the year. Hold on. As a third baseman. He, uh, he had like 13 home runs that year. He didn't hit for a lot of power and he wasn't like anything to get excited about. He looked like he could be a major league role player. Uh... And that's pretty much what he was until he peaked and started hitting for power and never stop, uh, never stop taking a bat at bat. Uh, somebody said, "Please take a drink." I'll take a drink again. Bader or O'Neill? Who's more likely to be dealt? If I'm hedging, I'll say O'Neill. Uh, I think the Cardinals love Harrison Bader and they know that he's a fan favorite and people will buy his jersey. Uh, take another drink. Uh, once again, Tim McCarver, what greatness are you? Are all you haters comparing him against? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to stay out of the Tim McCarver talk. Again, I think that there was a time when Tim McCarver was excellent and great, and I love that he was critical at a time when it didn't seem like there was a lot of criticism on the broadcast. Uh, I just think that now you're seeing someone who only broadcasts like 20 games a year and probably doesn't watch baseball much. Uh, somebody said it literally. they literally just destroyed their pants. Now, do you mean you came in your pants? Do you mean you pooped in your pants? Did you pee in your pants? Are you sweating in your pants? Uh, you can't just say you destroyed your pants. We need details. Uh, what are Patrick Wisdom's biggest strengths and weaknesses? His biggest strength is power in defense. His arm is the strongest aspect of his game at third base. Uh, his weaknesses, uh, he takes bad at bats usually. He strikes out too much, although it's refined a little bit this year. And there isn't much more than power. Although, again, this year's kind of an outlier. And, again, that's because he's been at Memphis now for three seasons. Has Piscotty reached your potential since being called up from minors? So the one thing I want to – Kyle, do you write up of uh, Hanson for my B-Day, please? When's your birthday, Graham? Uh, let me know. I'll, I'll do a write-up of Hanson for you for your birthday. Oh, Alan Craig ramping back up for another MLB run. Probably not. I remember he needed to be added to a 40-man the organization he's currently in isn't prone to doing that with someone like him. Uh, maybe it happens. I hope it does. Brighter future cards of the Blues. Well, if you're going by prospects, it's the Blues. Uh, but I don't have any faith in that organization to do well. I thought it was only going to be a fart. Turns out it was followed by various wet lumps. Now, is it like the runs? Do you have the runs? Or is it like logules? Uh, looks like Medina and the closer at Springfield now, which is dangerous. Uh, yes, Son is, uh, it's a little dicey. Tyler O'Neill, uh, taking lots of walks recently. That makes me very, yeah. Tyler O'Neill is an example of an aggressive promotion. A, a high school kid who starts raking right away, who is aggressively promoted. And at Springfield, or not at Springfield, at the AA equivalent, which I'm forgetting right now for Seattle, he would walk and strike out a ton. He had like a 12% walk rate or something like that, and like a 28% strikeout rate. And then when he got promoted to AAA, the league just outclassed him. It was just too much for him. And now we're starting to see the Patrick Wisdom from a couple of years back, the pros like the top 50, top 25 prospect in Major League Baseball start manifesting at Memphis with a little bit of seasoning. If you'll remember, going back to last year, I would talk rel like relentlessly that the best thing would have been for Tyler O'Neill to not get called up until June. He forced their hand. He deserved it. He was impressive for a small stretch of time. Uh, but this is the, like, 
This is the ultimate capability of Tyler O'Neill at the major leagues. With a player like that, who is aggressively promoted and struggles, that tells you they're going to do it at the major league level as well. It's just a matter of getting him enough at-bats to adjust. A uh, Holland, Matheny, Mabry, uh, FMK. Ooh. I, you know what? So here's the thing about Mabry. That dude's got a huge dick. That's the rumor. And I don't know if I can handle it, to be honest. Uh, so I'd have to kill him. Uh, man, I hate that Matheny. I really do. He's handsome as the devil, but I hate that Matheny. Uh, A. Seidel asked, do you think Tyler's arms are bigger than your head? I bet you my big fat head is just the size of Tyler's arm. Uh, and that's not saying anything against either, but it, I bet you my, my big fat head is the size of his one man arm. Uh, is O'Neal ever a starting outfielder for the cards? I hope so. Uh, that's the room. Somebody says, how big? Uh, Mabry's, so again, the story we told in one of the first prospects after dark is I knew someone who allegedly had, had intercourse uh, with, with John Mabry, and the rumor was that it was the biggest this young lady had ever seen. Uh, so just keep that in mind whenever judging his ability to teach hitting. Uh, do you think, let's see, has Piscotty reached your potential since being called up from the minors? What I want to say about Stephen Piscotty is, the comparison that I always made with Piscotty is I thought he would turn out to be like uh, Nick Markakis or Andre Ethier. And he's never been that. He showed signs when he first got called up and in the first half of his first full season. Uh, but it never manifested. So, no, he's, he did not reach the, the ceiling that I thought he would. Jose Martinez is doing an Instagram Live sick in his bed. Is he really? Oh, how can I compete with that? Uh, was she cute? Yes. Uh, tell us more about this chick. I'm not going to tell you anymore. I was young. As a matter of fact, I was like 15 and this girl was telling me this story. Ha! I could listen to O'Neal talk after every game. Eller Market. I agree. Um, this is what I think. I just, uh, when I get in, I just want to lift weights and uh, I want to represent Canada as best as I can. And, you know, I really like the Rocky movies and I'm really looking forward to Creed 2. And, uh, you know, I just want to make my family proud. Uh, you don't understand how funny you are right now. I'm an asshole. Thank you. Uh, sorry if I already answered. Concerned Terry Fuller not ready for Johnson City. I'm not concerned. Again, Terry Fuller has a substantial learning curve that a lot of people don't realize because he's always been a football player. And he's still learning how to play baseball. I, you know, I thought for sure he'd start at Johnson City. He didn't. He's on the GCL roster. He hasn't played in either of the two GCL games. Uh, but, but we'll see, you know. I'm not, it's nothing I'm worried about right now. Terry Fuller gets a bit of a pass because of his background. Uh, not, something I don't want to... I don't want to like bring up to like make light of it, but the other thing is that when Terry Fuller was drafted, there was concern about his like background. He grew up in a broken home and like a dangerous, dangerous broken home. And I would imagine the Cardinals are going to be a little bit more ginger with him because of it. Uh, Allen and Fabry in a first for Price. Yeah, nay, nay. I don't think Price is that much of an uh, an upgrade over Allen. Do you think we will make the playoffs? Ah, uh, I do think they'll make the playoffs. I think they'll be the second wild card. I'll stick with my prediction. I think they'll win 80, what I say, 86 games. I just said 86 or 88. They'll win 86 games. They'll be the second wild card. Can we have the old Tommy fan back? I think we're starting to see the old Tommy fan back, right? This, this little series in Philadelphia might have been the little jumper cable jump start. Uh, somebody said, hire me. I will gladly hire you. I will pay you nothing. Uh, happy B-Day, Graham. That's right. Happy uh, June 30 is my birthday. Uh, Graham, I'm going to make a note. June 30, Graham. So, Graham, if I forget, brother, I do want to tell you happy birthday. I love you. Thank you for all your support. Again, I think of you like a little brother. I really mean that. I hope you don't take the shit I say seriously. I just mean it to tease you. And uh, I've got nothing but mad respect for you, buddy. Uh, would you trade for Panarin? I would trade for Panarin. Kyle, come on. Price is a huge upgrade. I think consistency-wise, but I don't know necessarily talent-wise. And not at the price of Robert Thomas. You know, NHL draft picks or whatever. Again, baseball, baseball, baseball. Uh, can we trade Matheny for a mascot? A Fanatic would be the ask, right? I think Fanatic would be a high ask. And also, like, the Fanatic is the Jason Hayward of mascots, right? Like, his metrics are good, but is he really good? Uh, let me do the podcast with you. I don't know who is saying it, but come on out. Just don't talk about her anymore, Kyle. <laughs> I forget that you're a teenager and that you still be concerned about stuff like that. My bad. Promotions in Peoria. How soon? Hold on. Good life, Sean. That's who wants the podcast. Uh, ah, I'm an asshole. Okay, so we're gonna take we're gonna take a break, uh, and we're gonna talk about something that like I want to talk about the the birds on the black Facebook page. 
Uh, the lovely and talented Carrie for Cards has spent a lot of time on the Birds on the Black Facebook page. You need to go on the Facebook page. You need to like it. Uh, that stuff goes well for us. Remember, if you're supporting us, uh, then it allows us to do things like go down to Memphis this weekend, get my press pass, and report on what's going on in Memphis for you guys. So please check out the page. Uh, Carrie has done an incredible job. That Carrie on Cards on Twitter uh, is an incredible, incredible person and a, a lovely young lady. And uh, she's done incredible work, and it deserves to be recognized. Uh, we need to do call-ins, Kyle. I would love to do something like that. A while back, Gifts and I tried to work on something with uh, YouTube Live, and we just couldn't make it work. Do you even Facebook bros two styles? I am not on Facebook. Uh, what kind of merch is on the Birds on the Black? Okay, so right now on the Birds on the Black merchandising store, it's beautiful, by the way. We've got dad hats, we've got hats, and we've got beanies. We're going to start there. Uh, we're, we might branch out into some t-shirts. We're trying to figure out the logistics of that. Um, you're going to want to keep an eye on the, the site, but you should definitely go buy yourself a hat. The hats are beautiful. Uh, I'm a dad hat guy because I'm basically a 90-year-old trapped in a 32-year-old's body. Uh, let's see. Uh, best potato chip in the world, the kettle cooked jalapenos. I'm still a cheesier ranch Dorito guy. Uh, somebody said I'm in. Yeah, go to the go, again. Go to the Facebook page. Uh, you'll be able to find all our content there. Go to the merchandising store, at Birds on the Black. You'll be able to get the the swag, bro. Uh, Kyle for president. Someone says I'll gladly run for president. Again, you're gonna need to prepare yourself for some major shit that's gonna come out about my my past. I'll write about it so that I beat it. Kyle, I'm not a hat guy, but count me in if there's even a T-shirt. I would love a Birds on the Black T-shirt. I'd love a Prospects Up After Dark T-shirt. I think that's on the horizon, but we're trying to work out the logistics. And again, uh, that Cardinals gifts, I, that Cardinals gifts paid for all of this stuff out of the pocket, out of his pocket, and he did it for you guys. It, you know, he did it for us because we wanted the attire too, to be honest. But he did it for you guys, and I, I doubt he's making any type of money on it. He's shipping that stuff to you for free, even though I believe it's coming out of his pocket. Uh, Cardinal gifts is the best. He's absolutely the best, and uh, at the very least, go get a hat for yourself. A uh, goldfish or Cheez-Its? I man, I don't eat either, to be honest. I, I like a good goldfish, though. Call up Iggy Strode for the logistics. God, that dude is so creepy. Uh, Gifts is the best. Yeah, see, everyone loves your cards, Gifts. Uh, Gifts is the best dude ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so, here's what we have. I've got my maker's mark here. I love the article you wrote about your dad. Thank you very much, uh, Ralph Brody. I appreciate that. Uh, again, if you haven't had time... Before we get into hold on, FMK, Gorman, Fuller, or Carlson, uh, oh my god, birds on the black lingerie, I'll wear my G-string while doing Prospects After Dark, um, I'd, I'd like to marry that Gorman right now, I'd like to have sex with that Fuller, and I would like to kill whoever the other person was, but not because I don't like them. Uh, before we get into the article thing, uh, again, one last, uh, one last toast here uh, before I re-up my cup of makers. Um, one last toast to all the dads out there. I hope you had a tremendous Father's Day. That cheers goes to Mr. Hicks and Mr. Cower uh, for their participation in our prospects after dark. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, man, this is not easy for me to talk about. Uh, now let's talk about something else. Uh, let's see. Birds on the Black G-String. Yeah, love the gifts and Kyle. Thank you, Melissa. We really appreciate it. Um, what, uh, what else does everyone have? What, what kind of questions? What do we want to talk about? Happy Father's Day to the Godfather of the chat. The Godfather of the chat. Uh, cards, gifts, how could I miss that? Mr. Hicks is indeed the Godfather of our little chat. Uh, uh, Juan Yepes, somebody says. Juan struggled at Palm Beach before he got hurt. Uh, what would be your cohesive fix for the Major League team? Savior, my boy. That's a good question. You know, a cohesive fix... I feel like that's a loaded question. Um, hey, hey, Mr. Hex, there he is. <laughs> I didn't realize he was in here. Oh, that makes me happy. Hello, sir. I just didn't see the same without you. Have I ever been to Vegas? I have not been to Vegas. Um, somebody said, what's the cohesive fix? And to me, that seems loaded because what you're asking about is why isn't there, uh, why isn't there glue in the dugout, in the, bull, in the uh, it, you know, in the locker room, and I think I feel like you're trying to hint that it's a coaching issue. If you're asking me what the fix is for the major league team, it's just everybody needs to play as good as they're capable of at the same time. That's baseball. That's the essence of baseball. Uh, I feel like there's a narrative being pushed that the Cardinals g 
give up. And the reason they're giving up is because they're not being pushed by their manager. And I feel like there were at least two games out of the last three where the Cardinals fought back and almost won a game. They lead the league and walk off wins. They, they've had more games decided on the last out than any other team. This team doesn't quit. Sometimes they look, they look tired and malign. Uh, but I don't view it as a, as a cohesive issue. I just view it as sometimes bullpen mismanagement, which starters not going long enough and people not being effective when they need to be effective. Uh, somebody said Alex Fagaldi at Peoria. Yeah, uh, Fagaldi was like a 24th round pick last year uh, who has put up a minuscule ERA, a really interesting player, a really interesting guy. Uh, again, more likely, probably more than likely, probably only minor league depth, but we'll see. Uh, somebody said they didn't do enough in the off season. Look, they added four bullpen arms and uh, a middle of the order lineup piece and Cy Michaelis. They did a lot in the off season. Uh, I mostly just met with what you know. Uh, I think Tui's time is up. Again, I'm not ready to sell out Tui. What I would like is I would like to be I would like for him to be used differently. Hopefully, Holland becomes a bridge to Hicks becomes a bridge to Norris. But I wanted that role to be Brebbia. We were talking last week and the week before that that was Brebbia's role. He had earned it. He was doing really well. And they started giving it to Tui, and I just, I think Tui is a fine bullpen piece. I think he's a gap stopper. I think that he can be nasty sometimes. I think overusing him is dangerous, and I think he's being overused. I just think that Brebbia is better suited for that role. Ah... Uh... Ooh, oh, this is a good one. FMK pinch hitter John Mabry, hitting coach John Mabry, or assistant hitting coach. I think the assistant hitting coach John Mabry is the winner of the marriage. I think pinch hitter is the one that you sleep with, and I think you murder the hitting coach. Uh, with Sheriff out, who do you go to to get a big left-handed uh, out late in games? Now, Ben, you and I, we're going to argue on this, but I would still go Austin Gomber. Uh, I... I I'll be honest with you. Who's the manager going to go to? The manager is more... <laughs> By the way, Cards Gifts retweeted out, and I'm squinting like a jackass here on the Twitter tweets. Um, the manager is going to go to Matt Bowman. Just be prepared for that. Uh, prepare yourself for it because you're going to need to be emotionally prepared. Uh, I'd still go to Austin Gomber. 14 at-bats is not a large enough sample size. Uh, home run and a double in 14 at-bats. Uh, I know the wall blow was high. I know all that. But give him a chance. Give him a chance. And also, don't get excited about what you saw out of Brett Cecil, but Brett Cecil took a step in the right direction today. Greg Holland took a step in the right direction in this series. Uh, you know, I'd still go that direction. I still think that there's a chance we see Sean Gilmartin in that role. And, by the way, Ben Cerruti wrote a great article at Birds on the Black today about some potential options for the left-handed role, the loogie role. And you should check it out because Ben presents a couple interesting guys. Uh, I would think that the Cardinals, uh, uh, let's, what current relief prospect in the minor, oh, uh, it, somebody asked is, oh, Frank, uh, Frank Cower asked is Schrock coming up soon? I don't believe so, sir. Uh, we'll see what happens, but I think that you're looking more of like a September call up there unless a couple people get hurt. Um, what I will say about any acquisition that the Cardinals make, keep an eye out, especially left-handed relievers for, I gotta move this stupid lamp, uh. For guys who lead the league in appearances and have led the league in appearances for a couple straight years. I think that's the key to finding out who they'll, they'll target. Tell everyone that Schrock doesn't hit for power. Schrock doesn't hit for power? He makes good contact frequently. Uh, but we love Max Schrock. Max Schrock's a solid player. Uh, let's see. Best current relief prospect in the minors. Uh, it would have been Darian Gonzalez. It's probably Connor Green. Uh... Junior Fernandez would be up there, and Hector Mendoza. Those are your four. Woodford got pounded again, just growing pains, or something more. So, hold on, before I get to Woodford, will Jordan Hicks ever be a starter in MLB, like, ever? Uh, I don't know how you could take him out of the bullpen with him being as effective as he is. Hold on a second. I need water. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, man, I was going to answer a question. It was so good. Will Gomber have a shot at a rotation with Waka out? I don't believe so because of the options behind him. I think that there's a better chance it's Ponce de Leon or Gann off the bat unless you're looking at like a 60-day stint and then they might go Hudson because they can put walk on the 60-day and then Hudson take a spot on the 40. I worry that Green can get by on his stuff and won't address his control issues in Memphis. Uh, Mr. Adam Butler, Lance Dance over at the Redbird Daily, that is a very, a very realistic concern and it's something that I think you're dead on about. 
absolutely. Uh, we need Gomber in the pen. Somebody said, I need water. Oh, the Woodford question. So, uh, when I wrote about Woodford in my Dirty 30 write-up, again, uh, Colin had him higher than I did. I had him a little further back. And the issue, the issue is that he lets up a lot of hard contact. He lets up a lot of contact. Now, it's also worth mentioning with Woodford that he's in Springfield. And that's an aggressive promotion for him. It's in line with the promotions that he's had. Uh, it, he was in Palm Beach last year. He should be in Springfield. But it's a combination of growing pains and the fact that his stuff just doesn't play at that level yet. You know, I if you follow the track that he's currently on, he'd start next year in Memphis. I personally, depending on how he finishes the season, think it's best for him to start back at Springfield. He's still young. That's where he would be if he hadn't been aggressively promoted uh, to start the year. And I think you'll start to see, like, gains next year. But again, when you deal with somebody who is a pitch-to-contact hitter, who's young and who doesn't have blow-by-him blow stuff, uh, this is the kind of results that you get out of the pitcher, and that's what we're seeing out of Jake Woodford. Uh, your nastiest wiffle-ball wiffle ball pitch? My nastiest wiffle-ball pitch is when I throw the wiffle-ball the first time, and my arm goes with it, and then I can't lift my arm because it is numb for three and a half hours. That's my nastiest wiffle ball pitch. I don't know how people can throw a wiffle ball. I talk to my little leaguers about it all the time. During the regular season, I don't want them to throw the wiffle ball. It's too much. Uh, isn't there a 40-man spot open with Sheriff having Tommy John? Uh, I don't believe that. I don't, you know, normally I'm on this, and I apologize for not being on it. I don't think that they've transferred Sheriff to the 60-day yet. There could be a 40-man spot for sure, but remember, if you could add it to the 40-man, that's you get more money. Uh, keep that in mind. And again, they could they could add Hudson for sure, but they just added Ponce de Leon, and he didn't get a chance to pitch. Uh, um, they you know they didn't get a chance to pitch, so I'd like to see that, and I think they'd go to Gant because Gant held his own. Uh, if, is Hicks developing a change? Imagine him in the rotation. Look. Alex Bregman homer tonight. We love Alex Bregman. Jordan Hicks is fantastic. He is a monster. Since the beginning, you guys know how I feel about this. I thought he'd have success out of the bullpen. I ultimately have always wanted him in the rotation because I think he's a long-term staple in the rotation with proper development. I just think that right now, with the Cardinals on their current trajectory, I don't know how you could take him out of the bullpen in any type of near future. I think more than likely we're talking about something similar. We're three years down the road. Uh, the Cardinals are saying, well, he'll get every opportunity to be a starter entering spring training, and it never manifests. Uh, somebody said something about OBP against Gomber. Uh, I, I don't know what it was about. I doubt they will because of Rosenthal. Again, I think, I think the because of X player, I think that's a conversation that fans have and not organizations have. I think... It's like saying that I don't think the Cardinals will because of uh, will do this with Hicks because of Rosenthal. I don't I don't think an organization looks at it this way. I think the organization looks at it on an individual basis, and I doubt that they say something like that. Like that's water cooler talk. There's a separation there. If I'm running a company, if I'm running a business, I'm not looking at things in the grand scheme. Yes, I learn from my past mistakes, uh, but if I think I have a unique talent that can make a transition without problems, then uh, then. I'm not going to say that he's the same as this guy and make my decision about that person based on the other guy. Uh, Andrew Somerville, any knowledge on him? Yeah, Andrew Somerville is a lefty from Stanford. Uh, he's a big boy. He's like 6'3", 240, I think. I think he's like listed at 220, but he's big. Um, I know that the fact that he didn't start at a full-season club is an indication that the organization wasn't necessarily happy with the progress he made in the offseason. I think ultimately he's a loogie. I was surprised he isn't pitching out of a rotation. He's been pitching out of the bullpen. Um, stay tuned with Andrew Somerville. I think that uh, if, if transition to a loogie role or a left-handed relief role, he can make a, uh, a quick uh, a quick ascent. Will Fowler's time at STL end in an ugly way? I hope not. I root for that Dexter Fowler. I love that Dexter Fowler. But right now I can't imagine it going any other way. How does Gregerson get back in the bullpen? Uh... Hopefully by getting healthy. Step one is getting healthy. He's still nursing post surgery. That means you know four. To, that was four to six weeks two weeks ago. So you're still talking about uh, probably four to six weeks before you even have to deal with that. At that point, maybe you're talking about Tui really collapsing or somebody else getting hurt or Holland or Cecil or Bowman or you know Bowman's already on the DL with a blister issue and the. Uh, um, 
uh, the the blood flow issue, but you just don't know. Uh, it, get him healthy, we'll, we'll judge it from there. Only a 352, 42 slip versus L's in the minors. Uh, not bad either. It's OPS against, yeah. Again, so the one thing about Austin Gomber at the minor league level is he's, he was never just good against lefties. He was always great against lefties and righties. He's never pitched out of the bullpen before. He's never pitched on less than four days rest. He's, it, that's, that had never happened. He gets called up to the majors, then gets sent back down to the minors. Then gets called back up to the majors, throws three innings where he maxes out for three innings. He's called back two days later, something he had never done, lets up a double. Gets called back, or lets up a home run. Gets called back two days later, lets up a double. And he's been lights out since he's been on good rest and adjusting to the role. Don't look at stats. Look at the situation. Austin Gomber is going to be a major leaguer. I know people bash on his spin rate. I've seen people say stupid things like he was never a high-level prospect. Uh, Know what you're talking about before you start talking because that's not true. He's a legitimate major league pitcher. Uh, Whether it's in a relief role or a starting role, I don't know in the long term. Again, People forget that a three-year major league career is a really great major league career. That's the rare. And he's going to be a three-year major league guy at least. Do you think trading Marp or J-Mart could be good for the team in the short run for the right deal? Yeah, absolutely. Did Victor play today? Victor played today and he committed an error, Graham. Uh, somebody said, thanks, holy shit. Oh, hey, SEO Cup of Joe, what's up? Hello there. Um, uh, somebody said Gomber's curve is orgasmic. Yeah, it, it'll give you an orgasm. You'll climax like the Dickens. Uh, would you rather go to Bowman or Cecil? Uh, well, Bowman's hurt, so I'm going to say you have to go to Cecil, and that's how I cop out of that answer. Um, uh, there was a question there that I missed. God damn it. Say hi to Nerns. What's up, Nerns? What's up, JT uh, Vuderhar? Vuderhar? Uh, come on, Victor, you're making me look bad. I think he had a hit today. I think he went one for five, but he had an error. Uh, and again, don't take the defensive statistics at with any weight at all at the GC level, the SC level, or the, uh, the JC level. Because the score does weird, weird things down there. How about Lars Nupar? Lars Nupar has gotten off to a good start. He has like a 313 OBP, which is less than desirable, but he's only played like three games. Uh, he's hitting the ball really well, and I think he has like a 273 average. No power yet, but we'll see what happens. Will we ever see Tyler Lyons again? I sure hope so. The grade two strain doesn't make it promising. Uh, Cesar Hernandez broke Waka. So as Graham will tell you, Cesar Hernandez has the ability to break Cardinals pitchers. Graham loves that Cesar Hernandez right on cue. Oh, man. Oh, I see a couple of Joe says, Kyle, I have a golf tournament tomorrow. Advice? Uh, your best advice is to remember that you're not a professional golfer. So uh, if you shank, a, if you shank a, a drive, you shank a drive. Try to incorporate drinking as much as possible. Uh, SCO Cup of Joe, where's your tournament at, bro? Uh, do you, get yourself a, a caddy. Fly that, uh, that Zach Gifford in and uh, have him caddy for you. I will say, speaking of which, real fast. Uh, my other account got banned for applying to a sex bot. That's right, that's true. Uh, real fast, birds on the black stuff. I am, tomorrow morning, I cannot wait to listen to Zach Gifford and Joe Schwarz, uh, SEO Cup of Joe, Joe Schwarz, by the way, I'm sorry, I'm such an asshole, I cannot wait to listen to their podcast. Uh, The two of them recorded last night, uh, and I cannot wait to listen to it. I'm looking forward to my ride to work tomorrow, because it'll give me a chance to listen to it, and you should all check it out, it's at Birds on the Black, I'm sure you'll be able to find it on iTunes. Uh... It's going to be great. I know it's going to be great. Uh, it's got some good intro music by the Alex Chris Afouli. Um Far Oaks Golf Course in Caseyville, Illinois. Zach, no thanks. Yeah, you know what? That's a good point, Joe. I don't think Zach could walk an entire golf course. He seems like the kind of guy who would need like a motorized scooter. I think we could grab Donaldson for cheap at the deadline. Uh, would we want to? Look, if, if it's cheap, if he's not going to cost... Like if he's going to cost a Mark McGuire return... Uh, then yeah, sure, maybe. Why why not if you think that it's going to make the team better? But you at this point, there's no way in a hundred years that you would give uh, any type of prospect with a high ceiling or in a, a major league projectable career path for Josh Donaldson in two months of service. 
<laughs> There's Zach. Uh, somebody's, oh, John Greco says he's playing Far Oaks. Uh, hey, now, I played and walked all the time in high school. That was a while ago, though. <laughs> I was wondering if I'd be able to get a, re a reaction out of Zach. Thank you, Zach. I'm going to go and record that and send it to Zach. Yeah, you don't need to. Holy shit, he's right there. <laughs> That's awesome. But, Zach, I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything. You look like the kind of guy who would, you'd just rather be on, like, a Segway. Uh, a segue with like a built-in laptop so you could crunch numbers and be on an Excel spreadsheet all the time. Uh, Luke Weaver actually gave Cesar power. Uh, yeah. Oh, Mr. Hicks says made it back. Hello, Mr. Hicks. Uh, what is the Mark McGuire return equivalent? Oh, man, Ben Cerruti. That's a great question. Okay, so Mark McGuire return equivalent in 2018. So uh, one of them would have to be Ryan Ludwig's brother. Eric Ludwig, right? So you're looking at who is a player that's a brother. Chase Pinder. Ch <laughs> Chase Pinder, outfield prospect, seventh-round draft pick last year out of Clemson. His brother's Chad Pinder, who plays in the majors. <laughs> plays in the majors uh, at Oakland. So we'll start with Chase Pinder, even though he's an outfielder and not a relief pitcher. Uh, and then, man, oh, God, those, those other pitchers were so bad. Um, oh, God. I don't even know. Uh, like Anthony Shu and Austin Warner. Uh, thanks again for the great article on Old Man Reese. It, um, it's my pleasure again. It's nothing I, I don't know. Uh, do you think they will try to get a friendly deal for Hicks like they did to Young? So I saw who, I saw who asked that question. Uh, what I will tell you is that I, I believe that come this offseason, depending on how things shake out this year, that Jordan Hicks would – and again, the Cardinals aren't as aggressive – extending pitchers as they are position players, Mr. Hicks. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, that's part of the reason why they draft so many pitchers. But I wouldn't be surprised if after he has a tremendous year, they try to reach out to him. Uh, again, this is, man, I'm probably, I'm probably overstepping my bounds here a great deal. I hope I'm not. Um, they're using Jordan a lot. And I think that there's a good chance that that makes it hard for them to want to extend him, knowing about the wear and tear on a relief pitcher or any pitcher when they're overused. Uh, oh, I know, Mr. Hicks. Yeah, you're, you're good, man. You're good. You know, we, we are an open discussion here. Uh, but anyways, I think, that, uh, uh, I think that they would be less inclined to offer a team-friendly or uh, a modest extension to any pitcher. Uh, Jordan or or Weaver or Waka or any of them. I just think I think the reason the Cardinals draft pitching uh, as opposed to hitting on a regular basis is because they understand the volatility of pitching. Uh, wins Waka, a free agent, drafted in 2012, made his debut in 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, after next season. I think, or after after the 2020 season. Uh, Waka with Ozuna, I don't know what you're talking about, Graham. I'm sorry, bud. Uh, the fact that Waka never got an extension says a lot. Yeah, it does say a lot. But remember, you know, Waka came up and he was lights out. And then he was lights out for a half a year and then he got hurt. And then the injury hurt his ability to get a, uh, an extension. How about that Jack Flaherty guy? How about that whole deal? How about that whole deal. Wow, wow, wow. You know, a while back I saw somebody say something about moving Jack Flaherty to the bullpen. That's, I cannot imagine a situation, even with Alex Reyes healthy, where you'd move him to the bullpen. Oh, Waka and Ozuna free agents after 2019. Okay, thank you, my bad. Uh, after next year with Ozuna and Michaelis, uh, you buy or sell Holland right now? I'd buy, it. look, you would think that Greg Holland's stock would be low, and you'd be able to sign Holland uh, in the law. Like, right now would be the time to, like, buy on Holland. Uh, can you unban Holy Shield? I don't know how to do it. I, I don't understand how this thing works. I got lucky that one day that guy was talking nonsense. Uh, what, could talk, what, what you talking about, Willis? Uh, nothing. I'm not talking about anything, really. All right. So, uh, hey, Kyle. From, hey, Ryan Shul. Holy cow. I feel like Ryan hasn't been here in a while. Ryan, hello, sir. I hope uh, the farming and... Uh, and Middle America living is going well for you. Peter Bohr just hit a home run tonight. He had one yesterday too, right? Or uh, a couple days ago? Opinion on Greg Holland from Andres Fanador. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, we'll get to Holland in a second, Andres. Zach Gifford informs us that Stanton has hit the hardest walk-off in StatCast history. Um, 
Andres, my thoughts about Greg Holland are he's looked amazing these last two starts. He didn't necessarily look amazing during what I saw in his minor league rehab assignment. I didn't get to see his last uh, his last appearance before getting called up, and I've been really impressed. His velocity is at 94, 95. I know people want it higher. I think as long as his breaking pitch is doing what it's been doing with the command that he's had, I think he's going to be fine. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to say like he's. We've got Greg Holland uh, after two appearances and one good appearance out of like five in the minor leagues. Uh, but what we've seen has been good, and we need to be happy about that. Uh, uh, apparently not, Graham. I got banned for the whole broadcast rip. Oh, did you really? I don't even remember. A gorgeous home run. Are we taping our boners up or down? We're taping them. Uh, 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 we're taping them to the side so that it looks like we've got a cucumber in our pants. Uh, all right. So we're at an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, that's what I figured because why extend him when they have him lock on rookie deal for two more years? So that's the other thing, of course, Mr. Hicks. Let's talk about the length for Jersey and your sex life since last week. I haven't had intercourse in a week. Uh, the length for Jersey is beautiful. And uh, I haven't had a poor, 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 unfortunate lady uh, don the length for Jersey. Mr. Hicks, uh, getting back to that, yeah. You know, it's... It's uncharacteristic for an organization, although the Cardinals do have a small history of it, uh, to extend people when they have good control of them. Uh, who's Langford since Moves isn't here? Uh, he's uh, Colton Wong. Is, the, is that L-O-R on the shelf? Yeah, I've got the Lord of the Rings thing going on back there. You bet your sweet ass. The new baseball sure is helping Yachty's power. Yeah, they said Yachty is averaging like a career-high home run rate. Uh, what's it mean when they talk about a minor leaguer being on the clock? Helsley update. Well, what I'll tell you is I haven't gotten an update on Ryan Helsley other than that he has shoulder fatigue. I've been told it's shoulder fatigue, although I believe it was reported arm fatigue. Uh, and I will tell you that I personally believe that no news is bad news. Uh, your transition, Will, from talking to a player's dad to your sex history. Yeah, I can talk about anything. Uh, you know... Uh, I don't, there's no, the best way that I can explain what goes on at Prospects After Dark is I black out for like an hour and 20 minutes. And when I come to, I just pretend like whatever happened didn't happen. Uh, I'm officially on my third account because apparently Periscope doesn't like the word seshes. Seshes, like, yeah, like sessions. Also keep your junk locked down in the Beyond Beat Thong. <laughs> I will, don't worry. Don't, I'm not going to show anyone. It's an embarrassing endeavor down there. The last thing I would do is show my junk and the, uh, the bot Beat Thong. Uh, so don't worry about it. Uh, he'll answer anything for the next... Yeah, so okay, so here's where we're at. Uh, Linkford reminds me of a dark decade in Cardinals history. I'm assuming you're saying that because the outfield was a bunch of... Uh, 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 African-American folk, uh, but I know you mean the, the losing. Uh, that's fine. Look, the thing about progressing is that you need to embrace the, the, the things that went wrong. And the 90s were a bad time, and the fact that the 90s were bad is part of the reason why the next decade was so good. Uh, okay, so whatever happens didn't happen is my blackout approach as well. See, you're allowed to blackout and say whatever happened didn't happen. Uh, okay, so we're at the hour and 17 mark. I don't have a lot of bourbon left, and I'm not going to pour any more. Uh, I've got to be sharp tomorrow. Uh, we've got a meeting and stuff. So uh, we're going to do some drinking. Uh, and I don't really have anyone to cheer to. Let's cheer to, uh, let's cheer to a consistent Greg Holland. How about that? Because an, an improved Greg Holland, what we've seen out of Greg Holland over these last two appearances will help write the Cardinal ship a great deal. To Greg Holland. And again, I know a lot of people have cheered on him, or have soured on him, rather, but uh, let's not give up on him yet. Uh, cheers to Walker Robbins. So, Walker Robbins is at State College. And, you know, he's taken some really good at-bats from what I've seen. The stats aren't there yet. Uh, same thing with Brady Whalen. Brady Whalen is not a right-handed hitter, and they need to give that up right away. You can see the difference. It's bad. Um, but they've both taken some, some good plate appearances. They both hit the, struck the ball hard. Uh, that's good. Uh, Holland Hicks Norris will be damn good. That's right, Mr. H Mr. Hicks. Uh, and then you, you incorporate Gomber in there, and maybe the Cecil that we saw today, if it manifests through the rest of the season, 
and then maybe we get stuff together. It wouldn't be under the, I don't know what it says. Uh, Waylon had a double uh, right-handed first game, I believe. I didn't get to see the first game. I don't know what happened, but what I can tell you is I've watched every one of his bats since, both left-handed and right-handed, and it's been bad right-handed, and it when he ends up having to switch back to left, it stays that way. Uh, Kyle, you're the best, my friend. Oh, thank you, uh, Good Life Sean. My, my, my absolute pleasure to do this. Uh, I'm kind of a degenerate, um, but, you know, I appreciate you guys coming along, and uh, we've got a really great core group of people who come in and watch and talk, and I appreciate that. I feel like we have good civil discussion that isn't emotionally driven, uh, and I love that, and that's all because of you guys. That's not because of me. Keep that up. One last time, I just want to say, go to the Birds on the Black Facebook page, like it, uh, uh, Carry On Cards has done an incredible job with it. You'll be able to find all our content there. Again, like it. If you're liking it, it allows us access. Like for me, I will be in Memphis this weekend covering the Memphis Redbirds. Thanks to the Memphis Redbirds in that beautiful, beautiful AutoZone Park. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to talk to some managers. Hopefully, I'll get to talk to some players. And hopefully, I'll get to get some content to you. Uh, I finally get a weekend away. My, my family is incredible. Uh, but I finally get a little weekend away. And I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, Ralph Brody says, my wife and I just had our first kid. Congratulations, Ralph. Uh, we're going to raise our glass and we're going to congratulate Ralph on his, uh, his first child. Congratulations to you, Ralph, and to anybody who just recently had kids. So John Greco says, Beale Street. Uh, how far is that for me, Mr. Hicks? Mr. Hicks, it is about a, depending on how traffic is, it'll be in between a two and a half and a three hour drive for me. Uh, just right down 55 from where I'm at. Um, not bad at all. Oh, yeah, somebody said they just gave birth in the toilet. I'm glad you made it to the toilet because earlier you were shitting your pants. And we don't want anyone to shit their pants. Hopefully you cleaned it up. If not, hopefully you threw it away. If not, hopefully you sleep in it and you wake up tomorrow and regret every decision you've ever made. Um, I'm actually staying, uh, I'm staying on Union at the Holiday Inn on Union right across from the, uh, the ballpark which is just a five-minute walk to Beale Street. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. My plan is to get to the stadium as early. Uh, no, I'm in St. Louis. I, I live in St. Louis City. It, and when I, the last couple times I've gone to Memphis, it's taken me two and a half to three hours. Um, so my plan is I'm going to get down there as early as I can. I'm going to get to the stadium as early as I can to talk to people. I'm going to stay you know, until the end of the game in Memphis uh, if the rain holds off. And then I'm going to go to Beale, and I'm going to get super freaking lit and relaxed and enjoy my time because I got to be honest with you guys the last couple months since March have been super stressful I know they've been stressful but I haven't felt it and it's not until you realize that you're not feeling it anymore that you feel it uh, Memphis is a little sketchy yeah you know I've been to Memphis twice and I haven't had any problems uh, Kyle goes 90 on the rural roads uh, the speed limit for the majority of that trip is 80 and I set my cruise at 80 and I roll uh, Memphis is four and a half hours from St. Louis. It's not. It is absolutely not. I'm telling you, man, I made it in like three hours. Here, I'm going to do it right now. Uh, we'll do, I'm going to give you my address. It's 5079 Waterman, uh, Waterman Boulevard. <laughs> uh, thanks for talking so many questions every time you have this. Oh, it's my pleasure, Ralph Brody. Look, you guys are great. I just, look, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to everybody. We have, uh, we have an amazing time. Uh, listen to some blues for me. So again, my plan is to go down there, enjoy Memphis, uh, go to AutoZone Park, that beautiful park, talk to some people, and then go to Beale, listen to some blues, and have a great time. I've never had a problem down there. Uh, I've had nothing, nothing but great stuff. Matheny Bot has officially given my address. Uh, you know what? If you have it, you want it, you want to get a drink, DM me on Twitter. You're more than welcome to come over whenever you want, and uh, we'll share a uh, uh, libation together. Good. I hope so, Mr. Hicks. I, I would absolutely love that. Uh, do you like Imagine Dragon? Oh, uh, I do like Imagine Dragon a little bit. Now, I never got into them uh, as big as a lot of other people did, uh, but I do like Imagine Dragon. And if you were to ask me my favorite song, I won't be able to tell you. Auto Zone Park. God, this thing is moving slow. Uh, hold on. Okay, uh, Sun Studios, nearby the park. So I almost went to Sun... Uh, Oh, God. See, I can't do two things at once. Oh, wait, no. It's being stupid. There we go. Um, somebody says you're pretty close, friend. Uh, as long as you're not going to 
rape and murder me. Why are they saying for? Oh. Oh. I wonder if there's construction. I'm telling you, the last time it took me three hours, I didn't have any problems. Uh, Memphis is greater than Nashville. Uh, let's see. Eight. <laughs> Here comes a G Brown 5512 says, Here comes Oregon State. You know, I wish I was watching that game right now. UNC Oregon State had all the makings to be pretty fantastic. Mr. Hicks, let me go back. Sorry, I got distracted by trying to find my route to Memphis. I, I, swear, to, I swear it took me three hours to get down there. I don't, I don't know what I did to get down there, but it took me three hours. Oh, I'll be damned. Uh, yeah. uh, this was my first time here. Thank you. Uh, pretty fun. Definitely insightful. I'll be back. Hey, good. Thank you. Again, we just screw around. This is all just, honestly, this is just a bunch of people who like to have fun and talk rationally about sports and talk irrationally about inappropriate things that just like the same kind of stuff. Um, picks or it didn't happen. Look, I'm going to treat this Memphis trip just like I would treat a trip to Vegas. There will be no pictures. Uh, we're just going to have to... What's your favorite coffee shop? Uh... From Ein is Mine, um, I spend all of my weekends at Comet Coffee. You will find me at Comet Coffee on Oakland uh, pretty much on Saturday mornings from 9 until 1. Uh, and then I go mess around with my dad. And then I have Little League practice. And then Sunday mornings is kind of the same thing. Oh, hey, so how do they pick pitchers for All-Star Games? Uh, that'll end up being by the manager and the players. The players will get a vote. And then the manager decides from there, Mr. Hicks. Yeah, so I like Comet Coffee on Oakland. Uh, they just built a Caldi's Coffee by me in the Central West End. Uh, there's a bunch of good stuff. Uh, yeah, because we can't vote for them, I know. Know any nurses that frequent there? I do know a nurse that frequents there. Uh, I know a nurse that frequents there. I believe a, a young lady named Kaylin, who uh, also takes care of my dad when my dad goes in for his Kate Truda appointments. Um, I, if that's you, thank you for joining us. That's I, I hope that it's you. That'd be incredible. Uh, Sun Studios plus Elvis Hat plus Lady in Langford Jersey. Yeah, that'd be the perfect trifecta of awesome stuff. Can we win 10 games in a row? No, the Cardinals aren't going to win 10 games in a row. Stu Styles, thanks. Hope they vote for my kid. Uh, Caldies is badass, Pointer Cody says. Yeah, I love Caldies. I've only been in the one by me once. Uh, it's different. I used to work at Caldies in Kirkwood. Uh, years and years and years ago, I was dating a girl who worked there, and her and I worked there, and it was a disaster. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but, yeah, there's a lot of really great and amazing uh, coffee places. Shout out my cards that I'm trying to sell. Oh, SEO Madnels. Hey, there's our old friend SEO Madnels. How you doing, buddy? Um, yeah, hit up SEO Madnels. He's got, like, Luis Robert cards. He's got cards and cards and cards and memorabilia. When will Mabry and Matheny be gone? Uh, I think there's a better chance Mabry's gone during the season, and I think there's a better chance that Matheny's gone after the season. Uh, oh, I, so the, the Caldies in Columbia is good stuff. Uh, there used to be one in Springfield, Missouri. There isn't one anymore, but you can... Uh, uh, where do I live now? Good luck. Sean says, I live in the Central West End here in St. Louis, Missouri. I am born and raised a, a St. Louis City person and I've thought about moving out to West County and because I work in West County and there's just no way. I, I will live and die in St. Louis City. Uh, who is hitting coach in Memphis? It's Mark Budaska and uh, a lot of people want him to be the new hitting coach in St. Louis but we'll see what happens. Uh, somebody said word again. I Hopefully hopefully that's my I'm going to call her my friend Kaylin because that's an incredible person. Uh, if Cardinals finish a couple games out of playoff picture, would you think they'd keep Matheny? Again, if they finish a couple games out, I think that Matheny would be gone in the offseason. But again, offseason. Uh, somebody says, I grew up in St. Charles. Hey, Sean, good. Uh, I live in Wildwood and love it, John Greco says. John Greco, I work in Wildwood. I like Wildwood, too. I just The city runs through me. I love... Again, I live in the Central West End. I love my little active hive center. Um, I, you know, I just, I love the city of St. Louis. Kyle, is it bad that I've had all three accounts banned? No, it's not bad. I spend most of my day uh, in Central West End, just five minutes away in South City. Again, I grew up in South City, and I live. Uh, yes, it's Kalen. Hey, Kalen. Oh, that's really awesome. 
I really hope it's you and not just somebody's fucking with me because that happens every once in a while in our little thing here. And uh, I'm gullible. Uh, man, I may need to go buy booze. You got me feeling it, Kyle. Yeah, that's right, baby. You go buy you booze. You go buy you booze. Uh, thoughts on Brian Sanchez. Graham, I'm not answering a question. I think that he had like a double yesterday. And uh, he's like 75 years old, playing at a level he's 25 years old too, old, too old for. If the Cardinals finish this uh, tough stretch, under 500, under 500 is manifesto gone. Again, remember, uh, it won't be Mike Matheny that goes. It'll be John Mabry. John Mabry will be first. I would almost, almost guarantee, unless the Cardinals go on some type of epic losing streak, that we have uh, Mike Matheny for the season. Just... Uh, just yeah, that that'd be a super obscure punk sitch. Yeah, that, and that would be my life. Welcome to my life, Kalen. Uh, Dewitt won't get rid of Matheny if they finish with a winning record, regardless. We'll see. Look, I think I think it took the Cardinals longer to sell three million tickets this year than it ever has. I think that last year the firing or uh, I guess resituating of coaches and the release of Johnny Peralta, I think that proved that the Cardinals are willing to do something different and out of character. We'll see where it goes from there. Uh, we'll see. Anything could happen. I do personally believe that if the Cardinals lose a couple more series, Mabry's gone. And I do think that if they finish the year outside of the playoffs, there's a legitimate conversation that's going to happen between the Cardinals and Matheny, and Matheny will be gone. Uh, did Schultz get banned again? I sure hope not. Uh, without Quan, does Kyle love emos? I don't mind emos. Look, I like pizza. Pizza's good. And, uh, you know, some people are crazy about emos. I like emos a lot. Uh, my father is a big fan of emos. He thinks it's the best on earth. And, uh, you know, I like pizza. There's plenty of great pizza in St. Louis. I live by Pie. Uh, there's a place in South City called Bono's that are Bono's. That's incredible. Uh, kind of that Chicago-style pizza. I like Whole Foods. I live right across the street. Well, not like across the street from Whole Foods. Uh, but I live near Whole Foods. And I like Whole Foods pizza. Look, you can't go wrong with pizza. It's a delicious treat for the entire family. Uh, let's see. Pie is good, yes. Uh, Sarah's in Bridgeton. I'll write it down. S-E-R-R-A in Bridgeton. I was in Bridgeton today. You two sucks, though. Bono's pizza is delicious. Bono, the asshole with the sunglasses, is a dick. He is not good. Uh, let's see. La, Russe, La Rosa's in Cincy. I'll check it out. Uh, oh, I miss... Oh, God. Vito's Pizza. Look, favorite bar in St. Louis? Oh, man. You know... So, hold on. I had to DiGiorno today. DiGiorno's good. Uh, 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 what, the frozen pizza. Oh, my God. I eat them religiously, and I can't think of what it's called right now. Lena's. The Lena's frozen pizza is the best frozen pizza on earth. Adam Butler, my favorite bar in St. Louis. Now, I'm old. I don't go out anymore, man. I, I used to go out all the time. Uh, I, I don't go out so much anymore. Uh, I'm really low-key. Like, if, if I go out, I want to go to some place like Taste in the Central West End, uh, fancier drinks. Uh, you know, to me... To me, nowadays, going out and getting drinks is like part of a dinner festivity. You know what I mean? Like, let's go get dinner and then have drinks. And if I'm going to go get drinks, you know, it'll be Schlafly or a Heavy Riff or, you know, a, a place like that. Other than that, I, man, I can't tell you the last time I went to, like, a bar bar. I haven't been to a bar bar in a long time. Uh, let's see. Also, Broadway Oyster Bar, Crawfish, Enchiladas. Now, Perennial is a good spot to hole up and get a couple drinks. The thing about St. Louis that you can always count on is that there are a ton. I went to Civil Life and met a friend of mine from high school that I haven't seen in probably two years at Civil Life uh, on Sunday or Saturday, whatever day that was. And that was a great place, too. Uh, so, yes, the thing about St. Louis is you can always count on there being a good brewery, whether it be Urban Chestnut or Perennial or Heavy Riff or Civil Life, or even the two Schlafly Proppers, uh, you can always count on a good place to get a drink. Uh, thoughts on Solo. Hey, Colin, hey, Colin Gardner. Hello, Colin. How are you, sir? Uh, we were talking about you a little earlier ago. Uh, where you go to high school, I went to Bishop DeBerg High School. And if you ever ask me the high school question again, uh, I will never, uh, ever, ever answer it. I don't ask it, and I never answer it. But I did for you guys tonight. You caught me in a pickle. Uh, to all the people who went to high school in St. Louis for having to deal with that ridiculously terrible question their entire lives. Adam, what bars do you like in St. Louis? You and I have talked about breweries before, I know that. 
Uh, you know, I, I like I like hole in the wall bars. There's a little um a little billiards room that I like called the Q uh, that my brother Michael and his girlfriend turned me on to. Uh, I like that a lot, and that's like more my speed, man. I want to go somewhere where drink, drinks are cheap, and you can have fun doing something else. Uh, Lafayette High School here. Hello, John Greco. Uh, Shamrocks in St. Peter's. I've heard that that's a good place. Um, oh, man, you know, I'm totally blinking out. I can tell I'm at the end of my little night here. Uh, your favorite Cardinals team? Uh, I like the 1992 Stanford Cardinal. Uh, do you run it? into Chris Gardner, Gardner in the Central West End. I never run into Chris Gardner. Let me tell you a fun story about Chris Gardner. I worked with his dad for like eight years. And his dad is an awesome guy. And Chris is an awesome guy. And I've talked to Chris, but he doesn't like realize, like he doesn't understand the connection. I never run into him. I've never seen him. Uh, he goes to that Rosie's and hangs out there. That's a good little hole in the wall bar in an otherwise ritzy neighborhood. Uh, I think you should have another... <laughs> How about this? Okay, so I've got a little bit left, and what I'm going to say right now is to the lovely and talented Kaylin, who is a nurse at uh, SLU, and who I see at Comet Coffee uh, on Saturdays usually. I don't think I've seen you on a Sunday. Uh, who does tremendous work taking care of sick people. Uh, to all the nurses who take care of sick people and who take care of families who are clueless and are just trying to jive, uh, to them and to Kaylin in particular. Uh, all right, we're at an hour and 35 minutes. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pour just a little bit more, just enough to do one more shot. Uh, we'll talk some more. Um, again, just to go over some stuff, go to the face, the Birds on the Black Facebook page. I'm not on Facebook, so good luck with that. But go on the Birds on the Black, Black Facebook page, like it. Um, I will be in Memphis this weekend. If you have any questions that you would like me to ask or if there's any type of digging that you would like me to do in regards to the St. Louis Cardinals, Cardinals um, Memphis team, the Memphis Redbirds, let me know. Reach out to me via direct message on Twitter and I'll try to get to the bottom of whatever's on your mind. I will tell you that I would very much like to talk to Stubby Clapp and Mark Budaska. Uh, that's my hope, but we'll see how it all goes. Um, I have a feeling that I'm going to have a very tight leash so we'll see where it is. I, I know that that park is beautiful. I know Memphis is wonderful. And I know that just from last year, dealing with those people is usually pretty good. But I still feel like I'm going to have a tight leash. The other thing is, again, Zach Gifford and STL Cup of Joe, are, they did a podcast. It's on Birds on the Black. You're going to want to check that out. Check out the merchandising store at Birds on the Black. I, again, if my head wasn't so weird shaped, if it didn't have all these like little cave-ins and like hair grown in weird spots, uh, uh, you know... I'd wear a hat, but hats don't look right on me usually, so uh, I won't have a hat on. Uh, but you should go and buy a hat. You guys know I love my beanie. I can't wait for it to get cold so I can start wearing my Bot B beanie again. Who will you fanboy over more, Randy or Jagwell? Oh, man, you know, I was really hoping Andrew Kisner would be down there. Uh, but who will I, I – it'll be, it'll be Randy. You guys know I'm a bigger Randy fan than I am a Jag fan. Uh, just remember to keep it down in the press box. That's right. Yeah, you can't clap when uh, the first hit of the game happens. Uh, I bought my beanie and hat already. There you go, GM Gersh. We love, love, love. So <laughs> we love the merchandising store. SEO Matinal says, uh, Luis Robert. So funny story. Cards Gifts isn't going to be happy to hear this. Uh, I almost... I almost secretly went to Kannapolis this weekend, uh, or wherever Kannapolis is playing. I don't even remember now because I wanted to watch Luis Robert, uh, but that just wasn't going to happen. Uh, I just shaved my ass and walked backwards. Uh, did, now, did you shave your ass and walk backwards at the same time? Because that, sir, is a talent worth marketing. Let's see. Keep your shirt on down there. Look, I'll take my shirt off when I want to take my shirt off. The world needs my man boobs in my hair chest. More than you could ever know. My hair chest? My chest hair. Uh, we really could have had Luis Robert. You're right. Uh, let's see. Get some Ed Mujica stories. Look, Edward Mujica is like 40 years old now. He turns in at 8.30. Uh, the Fisherman. Hey, Ryan Fisher says, hello. Hello, sir. How are you? Uh, Cody Pointer says, yes. I, there could, I can only imagine what the yes is in uh, reference to. SEO Madden says, Jesus. More than likely, that's into everything I've said for the last hour and 38 minutes. Do the truffle shuffle. I'll do the truffle shuffle. I'll have some poor person uh, record it, and I'll, I'll send it out to you guys. All right. Look, guys, I've been talking for way too long. This has been going on for way too long. Uh, we've had tremendous audience. Uh, the hair chest episode. That's right. That's, I'll write it down. 
I'll write it down. Hair. Uh, the hair chest episode. Hair chest. Somebody have to still have to guess. The lovely Kalen episode. Yeah. Again, incredible. Um, it's getting weird. It's been weird for an hour. The weirdness started an hour ago. We had like a half an hour worth of good talk, and then it got it got super weird. Um, again, everybody, thank you so much for uh, for doing this and being a part of it. We'll raise our glass one more time to what do we want? To, somebody give me a cheer. Uh, been a great one again, Kyle, to Mr. Hicks. How about this? I'm going to raise my glass, and I don't mean this to cause any type of stir or anything with the Hicks family or anybody, but I'm going to raise my glass and say, to Jordan Hicks, may he have continued success and health, uh, because the Cardinals need him, and we want to root for him, and his dad is the godfather of our little show. So, uh, there we go. All right, you guys know how we end this. We end this, this, these episodes all the same. If you watch this, you are part of the resistance. Uh, for everybody at Birds on the Black, for everybody who tunes in week in and week out, we've had, on average, 5,300 views over the last 10 episodes, as Cards Gifts uh, told me. That's incredible. That's marketable. That's all because of you, so please keep that up. Uh, feel free to DM me about anything ever. You guys know that. If you have anything you want me to reach out to Memphis about, uh, players, coaches, whatever, I will try to get it done. I would love to be your in, your intermediate uh, with, with what's going on in Memphis. I've got a ton of questions I want to ask. Um, but uh, for everybody at Birds on the Black, I am Kyle Reese. I am your host of this lovely little Periscope. I'll say it one more time. If you watch this, you're part of the resistance. comes from the Terminator. Uh, thanks to uh, 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 our loyal listener, our loyal watcher for putting that together. Uh, and as always, everyone, thank you for watching. I love all of you, and happy hunting.